Well, this isn't exactly the way I planned on starting a video or making a video, but I pulled up to a, a location here in Holland, Michigan to pick up a load. Uh, went inside and gave them all the information I got just to find out that they sent that load out on another truck about two hours ago. And there's only supposed to be one load. The agent that I'm working with is all sorts of confused because that's not what's supposed to happen. Like, he's like, no, this is your load. This, there's only one. Like, this, no, that's not right. So the guy in the shipping office thinks that uh, his boss, which is over the entire plant, came out and loaded the wrong load onto somebody else, on, onto another truck going to another location so they're trying to figure out what's going on uh right now i'm just scouring the load board there's a lot of good freight uh the problem is a lot of it picks up tonight and delivers tomorrow morning uh like this one from joliet illinois to martinsburg west virginia it picks up today delivers tomorrow it's 631 miles 134 mile deadhead because i'm in holland so you'd have to go all the way back down around the bottom of the lake right it's 426 a mile, uh, and it's 39,000 pounds. There's a lot of good freight on here, but I can't do anything until I confirm that I'm not taking this load. Uh, so now it's just a waiting game of figuring out, you know, who screwed up somewhere. But either way, I think what happened is somebody just double booked it or double brokered it, whatever they want to call it. Uh, cause it is a CH Robinson load and it's CH Robinson. We'll just leave it at that. <laughs> it's not as bad as TQL, but whatever. Uh, that's why a lot of us at Landstar will only deal with direct, uh, shippers, like agents that actually have customers. Uh, and there's a lot of them. Like there's a lot of guys that I work with and girls or ladies that, that we deal with that have direct freight um and that does make things so much smoother usually the rates aren't as good because they're contracted in but they're guaranteed like they they're going if they say they have a load they have a load it's not yeah i got a load and it's still on the load board being bid on um you know or they posted it for some ridiculous rate on the on the load board and then you call and they're like yeah that load's still available um let's see here yeah it's uh it's all in it's you know, 600 miles, and originally it only said 400 uh, with no stops at $5 a mile, and now all of a sudden it's, you know, 275 a mile with eight stops and 600 miles. Like, that, that's the kind of crap you run into with non-direct shippers. Uh, so sometimes you just, it, you, you go bust sometimes, but it is what it is. It's only, uh, it's 2.40 in the afternoon Eastern, on Thursday, so I still got time to get a freight to, to get some freight to get back down to uh, you know to Nashville to celebrate the new year with the family. So that's what we're working on. Uh, if I wind up having to deliver something on Tuesday, then I mean so be it. It is what it is. We'll get it figured out. But for now, uh, we're gonna keep scouring the load board and just seeing what we can come up with. And uh, I'll touch base with you guys in a bit once we figure something out.
All right, well, we uh, <laughs> obviously got in the dock and that was a pain in the butt, but we got some hazmat here. Checking everything. Sorry, the camera got all twisted there. We got some totes. And let's see here. And one drum. So everything is all strapped up. Each one of the totes has a strap on it. Got everything nice and tight. Nothing else in here. We're good to go. Got all these uh, these placards on. Should have got my gloves. Uh, everything's all wet. Um, Y'all, even with the the drone backing up, uh, put placards on these. Yeah, yeah okay, we're good. Uh, even with backing up, all I could see was that sim sign, like in all of my mirrors and. Uh, my windows are reflection like it was terrible everything's wet so it's hard to see it just made for a difficult time but we got it done with the drone's help the guy was like are you flying a drone and backing up I'm like well i put the drone in the air before i started backing up and that's uh and i used that for like a backup camera you know just trying to help so i could see but even then it's kind of hard to trust it you know but getting our paperwork squared away. We got 23,000 and some change in the box. Uh, we'll get all this paperwork squared away, like I was saying. Like I was saying, like I was saying, like I was, I'm just gonna shut up now. Get all this stuff squared away and we're gonna get on the road. Getting off the, uh, was it 380 on to 77 North here? Oh, two and a half miles out. Oh, this bridge is really low. Just enough though. I don't do a whole lot of night recording because it's hard to see anything. So I figured I'd at least do this. Who's got a yield? Is that us? Or is that them? I think that's us. They have two lanes. We have figure out which side it's on the you know some will be on the left some will be on the right uh, but you can easily just get gas there and fill up your gas cans for your generator fill up your generator whatever the case is um, and yeah that's what I did uh, which makes things really nice and convenient you don't have to uh, go to What is this? Traffic laws enforced. 14-6 bridge. Okay, okay. 
Yeah, you don't have to deal with like going to find a gas station and walking to it or you know whatever. What is this next one? 132? Where the hell is that at? Apparently this is on my left right here. That is where I'm going, right here. Yep. Make sure there's nobody behind me. Don't want to go that way. 13-2 apparently. There's no gate. We're going to this koala place. Oh, jeez, that's a heck of a bump. I don't know which one's koala, but this is a, apparently Trimark. See if we can't figure out where we need to be. Maybe get unloaded at night if that's possible. Otherwise, we just want to make sure we park out. There's Paula receiving. Okay, so we're going to turn our little happy butts around and just park in the dock. Because it does look like there's room. Let's see if we can't go down around this area. Turn around. Same thing here. This guy's sitting in the dock or in his car. There's got to be a way to turn around. And I did see the uh, Google Earth. A bunch of trailers parked back here in the back, so that's where we're gonna go. good not good at all not good not good this sucks I hate these tight places my whole attitude and demeanor completely changed <laughs> oh man all right let's get this thing spun around here I think I'm gonna back into this little hole where there's an open dock and then try to make a left UE out of here I think that's gonna be our best option yeah that work. I do not want to play in that mud though. Should just spun around back there. But if I can go to a a better spot to turn around I will I do not like trying to turn around and bumpity bump there yeah that's not gonna happen I can tell you that right now ladies and gentlemen making this turn I'm gonna get out and assess the situation figure out what I can do I'm gonna change my logbook the lawn duty, all that good stuff, and yeah.
lot more room here than I first I guess, uh, anticipated, so. Which is nice. I want to stay out of the big hole right there. A lot of the weight on this load is on my drives. So I don't like dragging them if I help it. Get up here and uh, find us a place to park out of the way. Looks like those guys are gone that were in the shipping area that were parked up here. So just park right up here along the side of the road. Or the side of the building up here. I'll see y'all in the morning. Let's back into this uh, dock four or five. We already got the doors open. It's cold. I turned on my bunk heater in the middle of the night. At least I thought I did. And it turns out that uh, I did not <laughs> touch the wrong button. It did not come on, so. Oh well. Yeah, I thought I was gonna back into these doors right here. But when I checked in, he's like, yeah, those doors down there. So that's where I'm going. Nice thing is he gave me an option, so makes things a little easier, I guess. Maybe. Not too much. Oh no. Let's not make it look like it's your first day doing this. suck to trip your e-log going backwards huh? I guess if you went that fast right I'll move it over just a hair it's all right It didn't take too long. Uh, swap out the trailer as well. I need to get a leaf blower like Robbie or the truck stable has. That is a brilliant idea. Getting all these placards off. Uh, my next load is hazmat as well. So I'm gonna leave all the straps in there and hopefully I don't need all of them, but they're there. I don't have to run them back and forth with the truck. 
I did leave uh, some of my shields in because I'm going to need them. So at least I believe I do. Get these shields off here. Or these placards off. I don't know why I put shields on every... All these hard cardboard ones, but whatever. Oh, come on. Sometimes that doesn't work. You gotta take the gloves off and get the grip with your fingers. Come on. Let's go. Come on out of there. I did find out some very valuable information of this place last night. Or this morning, actually. Um, give me a minute and I'll tell you about it. Because y'all are gonna want to know this if you come here. It's extremely important. It can save you a bunch of money. All right, I got the ones up the front already as well. So, Whew, put my gloves back on. It's cold. Um, so I was parked here last night, and apparently there's a sign right here that says "No trucks or trailers," but I didn't see that because obviously it's covered by all that stuff, right? Um. Yeah, so that sign right there is a no parking sign. Um, so you're not allowed to park down through here, truck or trailer at least. And you guys can see how far we are from the main road. Like you can't even see the road because it dips down so far. Uh, apparently city cops come through here and write you tickets on private property because the sign says no trucks or trailers. And last night there was a truck that, let me take this thing off. All right, so last night there was a, a cop that apparently showed up at like, I say last night, at like six o'clock this morning. Um, and like wrote down all my information, like did everything he's gonna do. He's gonna write me a, a $200 $250 ticket, something like that. So, uh, yeah, I was a little, a little frustrated to find that out, but I'm thankful he didn't write me the ticket. The shipping guy or the receiving guy here said that they come up here all the time and they write tickets to people. Uh, obviously it's not a city issue, right? Like there's, there's not a, a road here this is all private property meanwhile the cops come up here and write tickets because they they're trying to save this parking for employees which is okay that's fine but it's not like there's a trailer here trailer there like there's a whole bunch of stuff dumped down through here and plus the sign literally it's over there on the wall can't see it but um, yeah the cops come through and write write guys tickets and thankfully this guy here um, and the receiving or shipping receiving whatever uh, saved my bacon because he came out and was like hey man this guy's probably never been here he didn't know you know don't don't write him a ticket don't do that uh, and I was like you guys are on private property right like then why is like that's not a street that's not a public access way to another piece of property back there like it's just strange that i'm in i'm on private property and city cops are coming in writing tickets like i get walmart because walmart gives permission to write tickets but usually they don't even call the cops they just call a towing company and the towing company comes out and boots your vehicle or tows it something like that uh so the cops generally aren't even, aren't even involved and I'm like, man, Cleveland must be a really safe place if the cops are writing tickets for parking when there's not a no parking sign uh, that's that's visible, obviously. Like, this one says no trucks or trailers. Like, what does that mean? It doesn't say no parking, no standing, no stopping, no hanging out, no loitering. It just says no trucks or trailers. Like, what? Plus, I wasn't on the fence. I was like 10 feet from the fence. Because 
all the crap on the vents and you can't even see the sign. But anywho, I digress. Um, this must be a really safe place if that's what the cops are doing out here. Uh, getting all the, the trucks, you know, breaking the law and writing tickets. Like, it's just frustrating. Like, I get, do your job. I get, like, parked on the side of the road where a sign says no parking, write him a ticket. I get that. I understand. But private property, when nobody called the police, like, the only way that it makes sense is if this company, Koala, 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 whatever, here's the name, right there, on the building. If they have some sort of contract or authorization with the local PD to have them come out and, like, check this, like, make sure nobody's here. But there was, there was people here whenever I got here. Somebody could have simply knocked on the door and said, hey, man, you can't park there. Um, you know, something like that. But the big money saver, the big deal, other than, like, don't park on the, on the side over here where everybody parks, don't do that because you'll get a ticket because you're in a different type of vehicle than what everybody else is in. Uh, see, I'm getting pissed because I cannot stand the petty money grab crap from our government. Anywho, um, park in the docks. The guy said, I don't care if you're in the dock, park in one of the docks. If you're coming here for shipping, sheep, receiving overnight, park in the dock because that's what you need to do. Um, and they, they won't mess with you. So go ahead and get in the dock, hang out there and wait until in the morning. They get here about 6 o'clock in the morning, just FYI. Um, yeah. I'm going to go to my next load. I hope y'all are having a fantastic day, night, evening, whatever it is. Um, let your family know you love them. Continue to see God and praise Him. And I need to do a little bit of that now. <laughs> I'm sure I'm so pissed. Uh, but anywho, think a veteran, carry a weapon. You are your first responder. And I will see you guys on the next one. Y'all be good out there. Stay safe. Avoid the popos. And don't park where there's no parking. Not a no parking sign. I don't know. Whatever. Just try not to get a ticket. Yeah, that's what I'm working on. We'll see you guys.